Welcome to Front Porch Friday. As we continue our series, You Might Be a Foolish Woman If. And honey, none of us wants to be a foolish woman, do we? We all want to be the kind of women who are wise, who are prudent, who are sensible. And uh, none of us wants to be a foolish woman. Last week we saw that uh, one of the first types of people that Jesus called actually a foolish person is that person that he talked about in Matthew chapter 7 who builds their life upon the sand, okay? And we saw that this is a person who hears Here's the truth, okay? Foolish woman number one is a woman who hears the truth but ignores it, okay? And he says, don't be that kind of person. That's the kind of person who's like a person who builds their life upon the sand. Be a wise woman. A wise woman not only hears the truth, but she obeys it. This week we're going to look at foolish woman number two. And Jesus speaks about her in Matthew chapter 25, uh, verse 1 to 13. Let me read this passage to you. He says, The kingdom of heaven can be compared to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. And listen, oil is always symbolic in the Bible of the Holy Spirit, okay, of the Holy Spirit. And it says they took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their flasks along with their lamp. Now while the bridegroom was delaying, they all got drowsy and began to sleep, but at midnight there was a shout, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and they trimmed their lamps. The foolish then said to the wise virgins, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But those prudent virgins answered, No, there will not be enough for us and for you too. So go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. While they were going away, these foolish virgins, to make a purchase, the bridegroom came. Okay, and listen, the bridegroom he's speaking of here is himself, is Jesus Christ, that he is going to return one day visibly to this earth to judge and to rule and to reign here. And it says that the bridegroom came and those who were ready, they went in with him to the wedding feast. But then there's a the completion of that verse in verse 10. It says, the door was then shut, which connotes, listen, that when he comes again, there's now no opportunity to be with him, okay, to be a part of him. And it says later, the other virgins, those foolish virgins, came to him and they said, Lord, open the door for us, open up. But he answered, truly, I say to you, I do not know you. And then Jesus went on to make his main point in this passage, and he said in verse 13, Be on the alert then. He's saying, Be ready for my return, for you don't know the day, and you don't know the hour. And so, according to Jesus, you might be a foolish woman if you believe he's coming, okay? These foolish virgins, they believed he was coming, but they were not ready. They did not have oil in their lamps, okay? They did not possess the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're going to talk about today, the difference between being a professor, okay, of Jesus Christ, someone who professes to believe and believe even that he's coming again, and someone who possesses Jesus Christ and is ready for his return. Because listen, maybe you hang out at church, maybe you're in Bible studies, and maybe you're real religious, you're a really good person, okay? Girl, listen, you can still miss out and not be ready for his return because, listen, I was married. I'm married to a man who, who for many years got by in churches and was very very religious, very active in service, but he was not a possessor of Jesus Christ. He was just a professor, okay? He professed, but he didn't actually possess Jesus Christ. And maybe you could be just like that. Listen, maybe you even believe that Jesus is coming again, but you're not ready unless you are a possessor of the Holy Spirit, unless you possess Jesus Christ, His Holy Spirit, which you can receive at salvation. You know what? Here's the truth. No Holy Spirit, okay? No Spirit. No salvation. That's what the Bible teaches. Listen, these foolish virgins, they believed in Jesus. They believed that Messiah was coming again. But they were professors, not possessors. And so I have to ask you, are you a professor or are you a possessor? Are you foolish or are you wise? In John 14, 16, and 17, Jesus said this to his disciples, to the eleven, okay? Um, now, we see here at this point that 
Judas has left and he's only speaking to those who are true believers and he says this to them. He says, after I go, I'm going to leave. I'm going to be crucified and I'm going to go to the Father. I'm going to ascend. And he says, and I'm going to ask the Father and he's going to give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That is the Spirit of truth. He's speaking of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will come. And he says that you will be, he will be with you forever. And he also goes on to say this, he will abide in you. He will be in you. And that is exactly, of course, what happened at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, where the Holy Spirit did come and did fill those who were there in that place who were believers in Christ and who at salvation still comes and fills us as well. In Titus 3, 5, and 6, it says this, that He saved us, okay, not on the basis of our deeds with which, which we've done in righteousness, all the good stuff that you and I have done, but He saved us according to His mercy by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Spirit, whom he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Girl, listen, at salvation, he pours his Holy Spirit out upon your life and mine, and he fills us, and Jesus says he's within us through the Holy Spirit forever. Well, do you have the Holy Spirit? That's my question for you today. Are you ready to meet Jesus Christ? I hope that you are, but if you're only a professor and not a possessor, Girl, listen, you need to know the difference. Will you say, how do I know if I possess the Holy Spirit? Well, there are so many different ways and too many for me to list here right now, but I can't give you a few. In John chapter 16, Jesus says that the Holy Spirit guides us into truth, okay? And that means that when you get into the Bible, that the Holy Spirit guides you and trains you and teaches you and illuminates the Word to you, that you understand it, that you're able to apply it, that it is meaningful to you, and that you're able to... Uh, that he's able to change you even as you read the word and as you apply it to your life. So that's a mark of, of a possessor and not a professor. It's the Holy Spirit guiding you into truth. In Romans 8, he talks all about the power that we have through the Holy Spirit after salvation to overcome sin and our flesh. Do you have that overcoming power of the Holy Spirit living within you that enables you to overcome your sin and to be growing more and more like Christ in your daily life? If you do, you're a possessor, not just a professor. In Romans 8.16, he also goes down and he says there that the Holy Spirit testifies to us. He bears witness to us. He reminds us that we belong to Jesus. Okay, do you have that inward witness of the Holy Spirit in your life? Or do you have doubt? Do you have question marks? Are you plagued by those kinds of things? Listen, if you are, the chances are you're probably a professor and not a possessor of Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 12, Paul talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, those spiritual gifts that you and I have, those speaking gifts, those service gifts that we have power to do uh, that we ordinarily, we just we couldn't do apart from Christ. And uh, do you see the Holy Spirit working in your life? Do you see the gifts of the Holy Spirit being manifest through your life? And then probably the most familiar passage about the Holy Spirit is in Galatians chapter 5, where it talks about those who walk according to the Spirit. Those who have the Holy Spirit in their lives will produce spiritual fruit. And that spiritual fruit, he says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Do you see that type of fruit in your life? If you do, you're probably a, a possessor and not just a professor. And that's a wonderful, wonderful confirmation that you belong to the Lord and that you have the Holy Spirit. Well, are you ready for the return of Jesus Christ? Do you possess the Holy Spirit within you? Are you a woman who has received the gift of salvation in the Holy Spirit? Are you a possessor and not just a professor? Well, if you're not sure, you can be sure. Because one of the things that you can know about the Holy Spirit is this, is that Jesus said the Holy Spirit will convict us of sin. Okay, he convicts us. It's the Holy Spirit convicting you today. The Bible also says that he draws us through the Holy Spirit. He draws us to salvation. Are you feeling drawn by the Holy Spirit right now to salvation? If you are, here's how you can become a possessor and not just a professor. A, I'm going to give you the ABCs. A, acknowledge your sin. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You may be religious. You may be a good person. But you are a sinner. I am a sinner. And until I'm willing to acknowledge that, I cannot be saved. Are you a sinner? Will you acknowledge that to Him? B, 
believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. It says in Acts chapter 16, 31, place your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ who paid for all your sins on that cross, who shed his blood to cleanse you, who died and rose again to give you everlasting life. Girls, will you believe? Will you place your faith in him and not in your good works? And then thirdly, see confess him publicly confess jesus as your lord and savior publicly in romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10 it says if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus christ and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you will be saved girl listen you've got to profess him publicly have you done those three things if you haven't girl you can you can through prayer and i encourage you to do that and lord right now i just pray if anybody is watching this video and they've seen today, and they feel the drawing of the Holy Spirit, the conviction of the Holy Spirit, that they are just mere professors, but not possessors of salvation of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation, that they would acknowledge themselves as sinners, that they would place their faith, they would believe in Jesus Christ, and Lord, that they would confess you publicly before others. Oh, Lord, I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, girl, don't be a foolish woman. Be a wise woman. Be ready for his return. I'll see you next week for our third installment. This foolish woman number three, we'll talk about her next week right here on Front Porch Friday. I love you, girl, and you're in my prayers. Bye-bye.